Whoa, what are you doing here? You must be lost. You just stumbled onto the Ross Runs podcast. Running, motivation, and purpose. That's what we're all about. Welcome, welcome everybody. Thank you for stopping by. I am Brian from Rosser Runs, and this is the Rosser Runs Podcast. Today we are going to do a slight introductory of myself and the podcast. Just so everybody is aware, this is going to be a new realm that I'm going to be exploring. I'll be doing a little bit of podcasting, a little bit of live streaming, uh, and like incorporating both of them into the Rosser Runs repertoire. And uh, hopefully I can figure things out and make it interesting for everybody. So uh, as a preference, preface, there we go, uh, my technology, even though I have a technology background, is very, very old and very limited. So if I'm doing some cool stuff, it's it's magic <laughs> because uh, some of the things I'm doing, I'm really trying to work around the lack of uh, equipment that I have. So, and that includes for the YouTube channel, uh, I don't have a GoPro. I use my phone and my laptop for live streaming or a video editing. It, it doesn't work. So, uh, I use my phone. My phone is my main everything. It's my computer. So uh, right now we are actually hooked up with a decent sized mic. My laptop itself could handle at least the audio part of this stuff. So that's what we're doing. Uh, Laptop is basically used just as a receiver, I guess, for a better quality mic and I hope everything is sounding like it's semi-professional using this so but let's let's talk a little bit about me and where I started running and what got me to doing what I'm doing now uh not professionally like running wise and like social media wise so um we'll We'll go back, I guess, way back. Uh, as, as a kid, uh, I guess I w- was a smart kid. I uh, had a lot of fun. We played outside a lot. I was really good with computers. Uh, I got like nerdy, dorky good with computers. Uh, and I used to be that guy that fixed everything all around the neighborhood. Uh, I learned a lot because I didn't grow up with a lot of money. So I had limited, you know, technology, whatever you want to consider technology back then. I I had like a a Commodore 64, broke into like a Tandy, uh, things like that. And I learned a lot because screwing around with the items, I would break them (laughs) and had to go to like, the library, you know, pre Google time and, uh, learn how to fix things. So learning from my own mistakes, I learned a lot. So when I encountered that around the neighborhood and friends and family and stuff like that, I knew the answers. So I was like one of the go-to guys to go with that. So pretty, pretty smart kid. Uh, that being said, I was like semi-athletic as well. Started out you know, younger days, uh, played all the typical sports from my area, like, uh, baseball, basketball, football, uh, was captain in most things. Uh, as I progressed into high school, I went into track and cross country. Once again, uh, captain, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, captain of like track stuff, cross country, I wasn't a uh, captain because I didn't like running distance. I thought that was stupid. Uh, I just did it to stay in shape. Really didn't like it at all. I uh, 
for my time frame. Don't know what it's like now, but I most of our courses were like you know like three point one miles or so. Uh, I I was okay, and I put in like some effort, but nothing dramatic. Uh, track, I feel I put in like a good effort. I uh, I was high jumper. I uh, have a I had a school record at one point. It was six two, I believe. Uh, same thing, three hundred meter hurdles. I was pretty good in, and I was like a go to guy for hey, we need you in like the four by one, or we need you in a four by four, or we need you to do this and do that. And I just jumped into it because I was able to adapt, and you know, you need points and stuff, so. I was able to do that. Um, once again, cross country was not a fan favorite of mine. Uh, college time, played a little basketball for uh, Penn State. Uh, that was my gym credits. Uh, and I think I ran like a meet at Penn State in cross country, which was... I don't know what the mileage was, five or seven miles then. I don't know. Uh, one of my uh, tutors, which was one of my professors, uh, he ran uh, the cross-country team, and he said, I need you so we could get points. Uh, we're out of people or some. I don't know what the uh, reason was. And he said, you're athletic. Can you do this? And I was like, yeah, you're you know, helping me pass. So jumped on board for that and uh, ran one of those. And that was probably the last time I ran uh, until, I don't know, military time. I uh, went after 9-11, had a really uh, an emotional experience with that. Uh, I didn't know anybody personally that I uh, was involved in 9-11, but my wife and I, we went to uh, New York on the 12th, I believe it was. One of our, my wife's roommate from college, her sister was down there and we went to go pick her up. So as we got into New York, uh, everything shut down. So we couldn't get out of New York. We were stuck there for like two or three days, uh, but somehow we made it into the armory, uh, met like the Yankees and like the Clintons and everybody were there, FBI, Secret Service, uh, tons of military, people walking around with like heavy, you know, machine gun type looking things, really intimidating. But because I had a background in like networking and programming and a few other things, uh, same with my wife. We were able to get in there. Uh, the Red Cross gave us like some big badge. Uh, we were there for a day or two, didn't sleep for like two or three days there. Uh, we walked around the town, the city, uh, which was so strange because uh, everybody was you know, affected, of course. Everything was wallpapered with, uh, Have have you seen me? Uh, have you seen my father? Have you seen my mother? Like, uh, it was, I, w I want to cry now, even like uh, thinking about it. And uh, this is, you know, pre kids, actually pre marriage time. Uh, my wife and I were just, we were going out a few years then. Uh, and we ended up on the top of a building because where we were staying, we knew the people that actually <laughs> owned the building. <laughs> And uh, crazy lifestyle. Like I, I pop in here and there uh, to like a lot of weird type of stuff. But I uh, ended up on top of the building. I was drinking a beer with uh, the dude that I was there with, and we were just contemplating life. And I, like, it, it really bothered me, of course, because you know what was going on. I, uh, and that night I talked to my wife, uh, girlfriend at the time, and I uh, was like, yo, when we get married, 
oh, I assume we're going to have kids. I, uh, I don't want to be one of those people that bitch and complain about the world and do nothing about it. And she goes, you want to go to the military, don't you? And I was like, yeah, you know, it's captain of everything. I'm still like pretty fit. Uh, like I, I want to make a difference. You know, how, how can I live with myself if I didn't do my part to make the world a better place? And she was like, I'll, I'll back you up, like, no matter what you do in life. And I was like, that's awesome. So we, uh, the day that we got back, which was like, I don't know, probably the 13th, 14th or so uh, of September, I called a recruiter and was like, uh, hey, I want to go in. I'm sure they were getting the same type of responses. And I, uh, yeah, he came and, Gave me a test, uh, passed, went in, and uh, went into the armor division as a tanker. Uh, did a lot of cool stuff in the military, good, bad, ugly. Ended up doing a lot of intel work because the way that my brain thinks, I was in certain things that, you know, really didn't exist <laughs> on paper. I. Uh, working out problems. Uh, military was definitely interesting, to say the least. Uh, it made me better. Got me off of uh, like drugs at the time. I, I still drank pretty heavily in the military. Uh, when I got out, you know, I have the same issues as most people in the military, uh, I have crazies to begin with. Uh, from childhood, I suffer from migraines really, really bad. And typical, you know, Americanized ADHD, uh, bipolar type stuff. Uh, I call it the ooh, shiny syndrome. And it definitely affects uh, everyday life because... I will be in mid-conversation and mid-flow like I am now, and then, ooh, I get distracted, go off on tangent, don't know where I started from. Uh, so at times I'm sure it's frustrating, <laughs> like talking to me, and I'm sure it's entertaining at the same point. Uh, so getting out of the military, I went back to like a normalized lifestyle with my uh, then fiance which became my wife. I uh, we got married and uh, moved around a little bit. We lived in Virginia because she had a really good job. Then we bought a house in like the Philadelphia area, which was pretty cool. Uh, and then we moved to our current location now. But through all that, I would say from the beginning of military time up to I would say a few years ago uh, things got pretty weird for me more weird than normal uh, I started to drink and do crazy stuff again uh, my childhood we skipped over like some gray area of my upbringing but had several people die early on me like my dad grandparents friend died of cancer that's why I, I shave my head now uh to this day uh, a few friends killed themselves like i don't know for a while there like i was actually straight edge until i was i don't know it's 17 18 19 somewhere around there didn't drink didn't do drugs didn't smoke hung out with everybody was actually vice president of my class in school. So, like, I was neutral with everyone. I hung out with the nerds. I played Dungeons and Dragons, you know, hung out with the cool, hot cheerleaders or the uh, the rednecks. I was in Votech, uh, which is a vocational school attached to our school system. I don't know how it is uh, or anywhere else, but, uh, you know, those were, like, the metalheads, the headbanger type 
people hung out with the jocks i was the captain of everything so i was like the voice for a lot of people back then uh i was straight edge though I was at every party still didn't do anything minimal peer pressure what peer pressure i had you know whatever blew it off everybody was like pretty chill with it uh but that affected me in a way that i don't know didn't help with the crazies i could tell you that i read a lot of philosophy a lot of religion uh, a lot of psychology rolled into college when i got into college that's when things got super bad because i was like f this and that's when i started drinking and doing crazy stuff to where uh you know i went to uh penn state for two years and i went to bloomsburg university for another one million years it was like a seven-year freshman there i uh, lived in <laughs> fraternity house for a while L- lived in my car for a little bit I ended up living with my wife uh before she was like my wife uh but uh we we I partied enough to where shouldn't have survived multiple times a week. <laughs> uh, and I I say that uh, with a smile because, like, what was going on? Definitely, definitely did some mental damage and fried my brain on that one. Uh, but, yeah, that was the beginning, I would say, college time, military went into that and didn't do any like drugs or nothing. Uh, but I definitely drank a lot. When I got out of the military, things started happening again. And yeah, my migraines were almost on the daily. And I would say right now, not that I have them under control, but uh, I understand more of the triggers. I'm way... One of my triggers is is weather, so uh, like seasonally, especially like winter season, I get them a little bit more often. Uh, but as I was getting out of the military, I was getting them five days a week. I had a headache probably for a few years straight. Neurologists, psychiatr- psychiatrists, psychology, blah blah blah. I went through it all, man. I I did cognitive testing building blocks math and everything and uh multiple cat scans uh you know i went through the whole game but a lot of it was towards my adult life was definitely self-induced due to uh, (laughs) bad lifestyle choices i started to gain some weight i ended up i don't know close to about 225 pounds or so i i was working in retail uh in my retail life there i was uh not high profile i was a high profile man store manager uh in the company i worked probably about 70 plus hours a week so when i got home uh, i was a rum and coke type guy because it was just easy and uh i'd bang about two to three rum and cokes a day to where i was up to about a half a bottle a day of captain morgan or cheaper alternatives i wake up with migraines of course i would just od on you know like uh ibuprofen or aleve or Tylenol or whatever i had there and I had migraine medicine as well. So definitely crushing some of my internals on that. Uh, to the one point, my son, we were in uh, the current location that I'm in now. Uh, my son, which had to be four or five years old or so, one day, uh, you know, getting ready for bed and everything, he pointed and said, Hey, Daddy, you have a belly like Santa. <laughs> And indeed I did. Uh, it wasn't a, a belly like a bowl full of jelly. It was because of my shitty lifestyle. Like I was drinking a pot of coffee in the morning to wake up. 
I would have about a six pack of Mountain Dew throughout the day to keep me going. Uh, maybe like a Red Bull or two during there as well. And since my brain wouldn't shut off uh, in the evening to go to sleep, I would drink heavily to pass out. And the cycle continued. And that pretty much sucked. Like it was not healthy. Uh, I wasn't a, an aggressive or abusive type drunk. I was actually pretty productive. I, uh, you know, my wife's when I come home, Hey, I need a, B and C done. Got it done. But I did it drunk though. And, um, so he pointed that out to me and for some reason, like I laughed at it, but it resonated and it slightly bothered me. And not too much stuff bothers me. I'm pretty laid back, but it, it bothered me. Uh, my daughter, which fell into the gymnastics world uh, via my my wife. My wife used to be pretty good at gymnastics when she was younger. Uh, we started like mommy and me type classes and it progressed. She was in it for an extremely long time, got up uh, pretty high levels. But uh, we, uh, we would go to her gymnastics practice and uh, there was like balcony. All the parents would hang out up there. It was actually like pretty fun, the, the location, the, her, her gym that she did gymnastics at uh, had other types of gyms attached to it. So like there was like weight rooms and uh, a baseball, like stuff that you could, uh, batting cages, that's what they are, uh, certain things like that. So it was, it was a pretty cool place. Um, there was uh, one of the moms there that was around my age. This had to be early to mid thirties for me. Uh, she, signed up for a half marathon and I overheard her talking about it. And uh, once again, running wasn't, you know, running was stupid. Who in their right mind wants to go and run like a mile? <laughs> like that's, that's dumb. Uh, even like on a treadmill in the gym, I don't know. That doesn't seem too appetizing to me. Uh, for some reason, I know it poked at the inside of my brain, and I uh, went to my wife and I was like, "Yo, uh, and uh, <laughs> if you know me personally, I'm I believe in human beings, uh, equality. Uh, the way I speak though is very raw, <laughs> and at times it's not it's not right, and I I know it. Uh, I mean zero harm, but that's no excuse." You might hear it on some of this and uh, man, I hope I don't offend anybody, but, um, uh, I went up to my wife and I was like, yo, that little chick, cause she's like five something, that little chick, uh, sign up for a half marathon. I, I think I might want to do that. Would, do you care if I do something like that? And she's like, well, how far is a half marathon? And I was like, I think it's like 13 miles. And she goes, what? That sounds stupid. And I was like, I know. She's like, do you think you could do it? And I was like, well, if I pay for it, like I could do it. Like when I, I know when I got out of the military, like when I got out of the military, I was eight pack abs. I was ready to take on the world, like literally to where when I got out, I wanted to do the army 10 miler because I was like, man, uh, how crazy would that be? What a badass would I be if I was able to run 10 miles and the Army 10 miler? Like, cause we, we did like, you know, rucksack marches that were, you know, marathon distances, but that was like a whole day process with like a hundred other dudes and rucks, full gear, over a hundred pounds, stuff like that. It, it was uh, definitely, I don't know, interesting would be a, a poor descriptive word uh but it was definitely a, a mental challenge uh, just as much as a, a physical challenge so when i asked her hey what do you think about me doing this she questioned the 13 miles i was like i know it's doable i had zero clue what it entailed i uh, didn't know anything about pace or or time i just knew distance that, that was it. So um, 
She was like, yeah. So I signed up for it like a dummy. Uh, the furthest I've ever run, I think, was that one meet in college, which was like five or seven miles. I, It's a blur. I'm almost positive I did do it, and this isn't made up in my head. So uh, <laughs> uh, I was like, yeah, uh, let's let's start it. So it took me 30 days to run one mile without stopping. 30 days. <laughs> and I was doing it with rum and coke in me. Uh, it's kind of weird because when I started to do it, I don't know, it was, it was mentally challenging. Uh, as I said, I was still doing it drunk. Uh, and it was definitely a battle between my personalities. Uh, being a crazy person, uh, I'm not sch- schizo or nothing, but you know, I definitely have talks with myself. Uh, to the point where as I was starting to progress to like, like three miles maybe even, my body was starting to fight back and it was like yo dude you you can't be drinking like as much as you're drinking you gotta like do something different like this is possible but like for real you gotta eat a little bit better and give me like different fuel and recovery methods and you you gotta drink less and maybe drink more water or like sports drinks like Gatorade or something like that and um, so I slowly started to back away from uh, the drinking. Now, it just didn't disappear within that first year. I was still drinking, but uh, man, did it got cut in half. It got more than cut in half. Uh, so eventually, I think the furthest I run was nine miles on a training run, and then I ran the half marathon. Ran it with a headset, Big Dave Matthews fan, like jam bands. Um, I grew up <laughs> listening to hardcore hip hop, like like N.W.A. and Easy E. and Ghetto Boys, and play basketball. I wore, you know, baggy shorts and uh, NBA jerseys and stuff like that. Uh, never thought I would be involved in (laughs) the genre of music that I'm into now. Like I never thought I'd like a violin and violins are like, like my favorite instrument. Now if a song has it in there, I'm, I'm listening to it. Uh, two types of music for me, good music and bad music. So if you, uh, not a big fan of country, which my family is, but there's some good country jams like instrumental stuff, you know, I'll listen to whatever. So, uh, at times I use it as, uh, form of motivation, uh, form of distraction, of course. Uh, So ran the half marathon, headset on. I was jamming. I was was jamming pretty hardcore to where a couple people I could see were laughing and jamming along with me. It was pretty cool, and I finished it. To this day, I don't know what my time was. I don't even – I'm sure I looked at it. I had no clue, like, what the time frame I was supposed to be doing it in. I'm sure I didn't hit, like, the cutoff for that. Uh, But, you know, I finished. And that was, like, a pretty big deal to me. Like, it wasn't emotional. I was, like, I was excited and, like, uh, inquisitive on my capabilities now because I was, like, I, I could probably run a little bit further. So I think I banged out, like, another like half marathon or two that year and was like, I could, I could run further. Let's see what we could do. So bam, right into uh marathon distance. Uh, ran a couple of marathons, which uh, I figured out that you should to make it count. And that's relative because uh, if you finish in your heart, it, it counts as a runner and somebody that, you know, starts paying too much attention to running. Statistics are a big deal then. Like if you do the same training run as you did last week and you do it 30 seconds slower, you're pissed off at yourself. Oh, I can't believe it. it's about, you know, that's, 
that's where most people are when they start out. That's where I was. And I figured out that like, you have to get under four hours, which, uh, I was, was barely getting, but I was getting, uh, I believe my, uh, fastest marathon marathon time is like 340, 345 or so. Uh, and that's with, uh, I might, might've been at like, like Penn state marathon, uh, cause they started to, to have them like the Nittany line type things. And that has a little bit of elevation, uh, not like the elevation that I run now, but like it wasn't flat. Uh, but still it was, you know, I was, I was doing marathons man. it was awesome. And I remember during one of them, uh, somebody was talking about, uh, uh, Tussie mountain back, which is, uh, another like race in the Penn state area, Pennsylvania. Uh, that is like a, a national championship type race, but anybody could sign up. But for some some big people, like end up going there running it, and uh, it has like elevation, has a few thousand feet of elevation. Like there's some climbs in there that suck, even as an experienced runner, like they suck. Uh, I heard people talking about fifty milers, and I was like, what? There is no way that people run fifty miles. That that is not right and they're like yeah that there's there's like things like western states 100 milers and i was it, 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 that's no way like i was there's no way i've wanted to call bullshit on these people uh but getting back home after the races and looking it up i was like wow there's some dumb people out there <laughs> that are running like 1500 miles like that's that is dumb like who who the hell wants to do that? But after the marathon, I was like, I bet you I could run a 50K, though, because uh, it's not that much further, like 30, what, 31 miles or so. So don't ask me. Sign up for a 50K. When I was done, I was like, yeah, sure, 50 miles. Let's do it. So the the, the Tussie Mountain Bag, that was that's what I did. And climbing some of those mountains, which it was not trail. Uh, it was all like fire roads, like a lot of paved, a lot of like, I don't know. It, was, it d- definitely wasn't technical at all. Uh, but you have some giant climbs that you're in there. And climbing up those things, I was like, wow, this sucks. But I uh, got to the end and I could honestly say, uh, the last three to four miles of that race is downhill. And so once you hit the last aid station, they're like, it. you just go, you could walk to the finish line now and coast in, which uh, is, the, is the truth. Uh, so, and it's, it's on road uh, the last four miles. So I'm running downhill and I would say that like, there's like a mile or so left and like nobody's around me. It's just me. That was probably one of the most, profound moments in my life of me realizing holy shit dude and I'm, i actually said this out loud to myself uh almost in tears almost i would say uh but like holy shit man you just ran 50 fucking miles like exciting exciting i was i was taken back by what the human body could do with uh you know just a little bit of determination that's all so finished the 50 mile like i was like i thought i was the coolest person in the world now of course i had a few friends that ran it with me as well they're super cool uh we're all badasses you know runners are it's a different type of mentality different type of crazy so you know my friends and family were like oh wow you're a crazy person which they, they said that before running um during my training up to the 50 miler, I, th- I think after like some of my 50 Ks, uh, I started videoing. I was using my phone. I did get a a, a GoPro. Uh, it was a GoPro Session 4. If you look at some of my videos, uh, I have the GoPro in there. I uh, lost it. <laughs> so now it's strictly my phone at the moment uh, that I do all my videoing on and my editing. Uh, so I'm down to one piece of vital equipment. Luckily, my phone is attached 
to me. So, uh, but I started doing that, started the YouTube channel. I did it strictly to show my friends and family, and my, my wife, like, look at what I'm doing. Like, look at where I, I go. Pretty cool. Doing some insane stuff. Didn't expect it to be like a channel channel. You know, it was just, just documentation. That's all. Some cool stuff. Um, then, as I said, I worked at retail. Uh, one of my employees, uh, she was one of my, you know, top employees for a very long time. Uh, knew I ran, uh, talked about it often. She's like, oh, you should meet my brother. He runs and organizes these trail races. And I was like, what do you mean? And she's like, yeah, they, they run like these trail races. They're races in the woods and in the mountains. I was like, oh, that sounds pretty interesting. So, uh, you know, Facebook was around then, you know, so uh, she sent me a message and I uh, figured out who he was. And like the next day or two, when I saw her at work, sort of pulled her aside and yelled at her. I was like, uh, so he's a race director. And she's like, yeah. And I was like, you knew I've been running for like two years, like pretty heavily. And this is the first time you're mentioning him to me. And she's like, oh, sorry, I didn't put two and two together, which uh, just funny side story about it that uh, her brother, which is Dave Walker, which he uh, runs, I'm not sure he does it anymore, but he was doing uh, World's End 50K and 100K and Eastern States he took over as the race director. So I got in touch with him, which was, you know, back then still uncomfortable with social media in general, even reaching out to random people. Like, I don't know who this guy is. Is he going to think I'm a, well, people think I'm a crazy person. I'll say it a million times over, but like, is he going to think I'm a a weirdo reaching out to him for no reason, you know, for, to run? So I was like, yo, I work with your sister. I'm your, I'm your sister's boss. She told me that you do these uh, trail things. Like, what, can you explain it to me? And he's like, well, actually, uh, we have a group run coming up in another month or so. Uh, and it's at World's End, which is like 40 minutes from my house. And right now, my favorite trail, like ever, uh, go there as much as I can. Uh, he's like, yeah, we are going to be doing, it was a nine mile loop. It's part of the 50 and 100K course. Uh, but he's like, yeah. There, there's like, there should be some people there. I think there was like 25 people that showed up. Um, and it was my first trail experience ever. And it was uh, in January. So it was cold out. And we ran. And I thought, since I ran these 50 milers, that people would look at me as, oh, who is this badass? You know, like, what? This guy is so cool. And I was not cool. These people were experienced trail people. Uh, everybody, so inviting, so kind. Uh, everybody joked around. The environment was very positive. Uh, I was, I felt like I was six years old playing in the woods. It was it was so much fun. Uh, but I hear these people talking about like their 100K and 100-mile races. And I was like, what? And as I was running, I looked and I was like, yo, can I ask you like some weird novice questions? And like the, I was was sort of like up towards the front of the pack because, you know, not knowing what's going on, you know, hustling and stuff like that. They're just gliding, having a good time. I'm like working a little bit. And I was like, uh, what type of like shoes are you wearing? Like, are those football cleats? <laughs> because uh, I don't know anything about this stuff. And they're like, no, they're trail shoes. And I was like, can you explain? Is that like a hiking thing? And they're like, well, yeah, no, it's their trail shoes. Like, what do you wear now? And like, I was an Asics person forever for a uh, road. And I was like, oh, these are my, my Asics and everything. Uh, and they're like, are those road shoes? And I was like, yeah, is like what else is there <laughs> besides like track shoes, right? And uh, they're like, no, no, uh, there's there's trail shoes. They're 
I guess they're like football cleats. I, you know, they have, you know, were showing them to me and I was like, wow. So I asked the RD, I was like, yo, uh, can you give me some recommendations on stuff like that? And he's like, yeah. Uh, do you like the trail? Dude, I was, I was taken back by that experience alone. That was life changing spiritual moment running on that trail. Uh, was I destroyed at the end? Yes. Did we climb what seemed like Mount Everest 10 times during that nine to 10 mile loop? Uh, yes. Did I see stars and slowly tunnel vision and almost black out multiple times? Oh, yes. Uh, to the point where I didn't even have a hydration pack, which I seen everybody, what type of backpacks are you carrying? Is that like a camel back? <laughs> you know, typical you know, novice, dumbass questions, which everybody was kind and explained things to me. Uh, figured out like certain pairs of shoes and stuff. But uh, when I got back from that first trail run, my first trail run ever, I signed up for World's End 100K, which was five months after that. Not uh, yeah, I ran a 50 miler before. What's a couple more miles? Shouldn't be, shouldn't be an issue at all. No problem. I was, uh, did the same amount of running, you know, it's that towards a uh, winter season, you know, so it wasn't like ginormous miles or nothing, but like, uh, I always just, I talk to myself and th- uh, about myself in third person at times. And I, I just roster my way through things, you know, like, yeah, I can do it. Yeah. I'll struggle just like everything else and I'll get through it. No problem. Um, yeah. So I ran a bunch of stuff. That race came up, race started. It was one of the coolest experiences ever because, you know, running a marathon, a couple hundred to thousand people running. There's crowds all over like screaming and cheering, you know, it's a circus throughout the whole thing. When you're running trail, uh, you have bits and pieces of that, and then you're alone. <laughs> I mean, uh, being a novice, not good with directions, and I'm self-aware that I have zero direction sense uh, to where I was with a bunch of people for a while, Started out too strong, just like everybody else does, and I still do to this day, probably. Uh, got got pretty far, and people started to dissipate. Uh, less people and less people and less people. Uh, it started to rain. I think it rained for eight or more hours uh, for that race. Uh, it started to get dark. I did have a headlamp. Never ran in the dark ever in my life. Um, I was a little bit uncomfortable with uh, the rain situation. Uh, and I was coming up to points to where we, there were, there's a decent amount of stream water crossings in the race um, that I was like, uh, does this path go through this stream? It's like to the other side. That it seemed very illogical and unsafe to me because that's, you know, you don't do that on the road. And uh, we didn't do that during my few training runs on the trail. And uh, I see, like, uh, a flag on the other side. I'm like, I, I, I guess you go through the stream. And uh, there is one point r- raining out. It's getting dark. I cross the stream. Uh, and I something happened to where I was like, hmm. There, all right, there's there's the trail. And I was like, wait, did I come from that way? Or am I going that way? And I got turned around a little bit, which anxiety was setting in. Once again, getting nervous because it's getting dark. I'm crossing streams, which I'm not normally used to. It's been raining for so long that uh, the water's starting to overcome certain pathways and um, the streams and creeks, cricks, whatever uh, that we're going through is rising. Uh, Not rising to where it's unsafe, but like it went from like uh, shoe, like sole height to like ankle to certain areas where 
uh, I had a cross that was like almost knee deep, which was like, what? <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's not mentally prepared for that. Um, to one area, it's like through a little valley. I crossed the waterway to the other side, ran a few hundred meters, and it crosses back over the same waterway to a path on the other side. And you run a few hundred meters, and it crosses back. And I was like, I was super confused, thinking, there's no way. Do other people do this? Once again, nobody around me. Um, I was really afraid that, A, I was lost. Uh, and I was going the wrong way. Uh, and I wasn't doing the right thing. Got up to a certain ridge line that I was running and going down. As I said, it was pouring out. And um, almost uncontrollably going down this path, all wet, to where I had to grab onto a tree because I almost supermaned off the side. And I was, it was the first time I was actually scared on a trail uh, to where I was like, wow, I could have died right there. And I don't know if I'm even on the right path. <laughs> I haven't seen a person in hours and I don't know where the aid station is. I didn't have like a GPS watch then. I didn't know what was going on. I, would, I was using my phone forever. And on the races that I do, uh, GPS doesn't work on your phone. Like phones don't work where I go. So, so um, yeah, a little bit scared. I um, ended up fighting myself multiple times of why are you doing this? This is dumb. This is unsafe. I uh, got to an aid station. They talked me to going to the next aid station. I was already dark then. Uh, and I was like, okay, and ended up walking from that aid station to the next aid station. Uh, and that was the 50 mile mark. I made it to the 50 mile, uh, aid station and, uh, I was off. I missed it by like five, 10 minutes or so. Sort of kind of did that on purpose. Like I definitely could have made the cutoff if I pushed it once again, novice, scared, uh, worked every angle to uh, maybe if I hurt myself, they'll pull me from the race uh, type mentality. I'm sure everybody goes through that. And um, so I missed the cutoff and I was like, yeah, all right, I'm done. So I get there and they're like, if you want, you could still go to the next aid station. Like we'll, we'll give you the okay to go and we'll just radio ahead. And I was like, nope. <laughs> and my my uh, family was there, my wife and kids, my in-laws were actually there. Uh, and they're, they're like, you're not going to go on? I was like, no. And they're like, uh, no, that's, that's fine. Are you upset? And I was like, oh, no. Like, I just ran 50 miles. It felt like a hurricane to me. Uh, in up a mountain, it, it was actually uh, enlightening, humbling, scary, uh, gambit of emotions. Uh, I was pretty sore afterwards. Uh, it, it was so super strange uh, to have my first trail race as like that's that's a known like hard hard race. Uh, and I made fifty miles of it. Uh, if I had an understanding of what was going on beforehand, uh, I I would have stood, but definitely was not mentally prepared physically yeah could have rostered my way through it mentally oh hell no so uh my wife was you know joking and stuff in the car and she's like uh are you, are you ever gonna do another one again i was like i, I don't know they're interesting and i went home and of course you know within a day or so looking for more races uh and it just progressed from there, you know, 100 Ks, 100 miles. Uh, I do a lot of things on my own now. So, and I've did this before COVID shut down the world and a lot of the race uh, series and stuff like that to where, uh, as I said, I, I've had a few friends commit suicide. So now I'm dedicating uh, my running to suicide prevention. Uh, 
I started my own sort of a backyard ultra. Uh, there is friends of the family that own a winery in my area and I run by there often and I figured out uh, if I use their winery as home base or an aid station, I there's a a loop I could do that would end up being three miles and uh, almost three miles to the step. Uh, and it's 250 feet, I believe, of gain per loop. Uh, that I asked him, hey, can, can I use your uh, your place as like an aid station? And I want to run for 24 hours. And every hour on the hour, I want to run this three-mile loop. And, of course, they, they didn't bat an eye because they're super awesome people. And uh, they understand what I do and uh, why I'm doing it now. And uh, I was like, yeah. It'll probably spark them some business. Uh, I'll do some minimal advertising, and we'll see how everything goes. And we uh, did it for the first year. We had a decent amount of turnout. Uh, basically, it's a, a run, walk, a backyard ultra uh, for 24 hours. I did it every hour on the hour. I did uh, the three-mile loop, so it was like 75 miles that I did that year. Uh, but I had uh, multiple people come do walk-a-loop, uh, walk three loops, you know, run. I had a couple of people that were like, Hey, can I, uh, I want to do my longest training run ever. And I want to do it, uh, there. Is it possible I could do like, you know, six loops or so, uh, uh, but not on the hour, just continue. I was like, you can do whatever you want, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like we're here just for the idea, uh, and awareness. And, uh, you know, you could give a dollar or, or, or nothing. Uh, you know, we had some giveaways and raffles and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, uh, we did that for two years straight. Uh, last year we did it, uh, with a little bit of COVID complications going on. So, you know, uh, social distancing, things were set up a little bit different. I had to wear masks and stuff. Uh, last year uh, I tried to do, uh, 24 hours I wanted to do 100 miles in the 24 hours instead of doing it every hour on the hour uh, but everybody else would still do it on the hour unless they wanted to be dumb like me and try that but of course uh, the month before that in training uh, I tripped over my shadow on flat level ground on cement uh, I was going to do 100k as a training run, I uh, had a good time with it, and I was, I think, eight miles in, and almost broke my ankle. I uh, had to have my wife come and pick me up. Uh, so, the hundred miles in twenty-four hours was still going to be attempted, but I was, I was realistic about it, knowing that uh, I'm just happy if I could run at all so i started out doing that for a while uh, on the loops and to a point where i was like yeah this this isn't gonna happen so i just backed off and i ended up doing like another i think it was 70 some miles again so uh you know i had a good time i think i i took a nap <laughs> uh, because i was i had a, a, a so far that i took a nap and just just had a a good time as much as i could uh uh you know with the event uh for the two years on that i raise about five grand so uh i'm going to do the same this year uh i have some big plans set up uh, i want to start another i know this is all you know depending on how covid19 is and how the world is uh like moving forward or whatever uh in april april I want to see if I could set up with uh, one of the high schools in my area to do uh, a 50 miler there and uh, do 50 miles on a track, like a high school track, run circles on a high school track uh, and do the same type of mentality to where uh, if I do it on a track, uh, I could have people come, uh, they could do 
one loop on the track or how many loops they want to do and uh, they'll be able to be social distanced uh, and I think things will be actually set up in a safer mentality that way and I really feel that mental health uh, and suicide awareness uh, is going to be like a huge factor in the upcoming years because of the way the world is locked down. So um, I definitely we're going to be working to try to get this event started uh, in April. If not, I'm just going to run 50 miles as training. Um, then I have World's End 100K set up for uh, June. Uh and then the actual 24-hour uh, run-walk backyard ultra that I was just mentioning uh, that I've done the last two years, That's it. I have that in July. And this year I'm going to try for the 100 miles in the 24 hours again. Uh, August, uh, dependent on scheduling and work and personal life and stuff like that i want to see if i could get a crew together and hit up like 150 miles or so on one of the like mid-state trails at something like that uh, around my area i, I want to see the sunrise more than once in a run which sounds terrible uh, but we're gonna see what we could do i uh, and see if I could, you know, make a difference, uh, have some purpose, um, and raise some money this year. Uh, see if I could raise more than I did in the last two years combined. That's that's going to be the goal to move forward. So, um, but yeah, that's we did pretty good so far in this. We uh, we talked about the beginning. We got up to where we are right now and current stages of life uh, I uh, really do a lot YouTube wise I, I went from training for races and training becoming I don't know difficult because they weren't fun anymore and it was more of a task like a job uh, to where figuring out that if I run one mile or a hundred miles, nobody truly cares except for me. Uh, everybody's going to be equally as proud of me, no matter what I do, the attempts, whatever, whatever. I uh, totally understand that. Once the realism is put in to perspective, uh, that it's me versus me, uh, training really became more fun. So, and if you run with me, I'm annoying because I I preach uh, I preach the word of the universe and Rosser isms, uh, no spe- specific religion type stuff, but uh, I do that and I stop take photos and videos to where the point you'll see in some of my videos like bugs, snakes, leaves, just scenery. I see a lot of cool stuff like rainbows and animals and stuff to where like if I see something cool, uh, I'll lay down on the right in the middle of the road and take a cool video or photo. And uh, that's everybody is <laughs> pretty cool with me when I do it. Uh, some people keep on running. I'll catch up or a lot of people stop and stare, point and laugh. You know, how it goes. But but yeah, I, I made it to where. It's more fun, and I live in the moment when I run. Running is therapy for me now. Uh, it's not a job. If I don't run, yeah, I get anxieties when I don't run because I feel I should be constantly running. But like, if when I'm out there, I I fix a lot of problems. So for myself, others, I have conversations with everybody in my head, of course. Uh, at times, I jam to music, listen to audiobooks, podcasts, things like that. Uh, but for the most part, I'm out there just just having a good time. So uh, that's what running's all about. And I think that's 
the direction I want to go with everything I'm doing now with the Rasa Run stuff. Like, just want to have fun, you know, make some cool videos, mostly on my phone, uh, maybe do some podcasts, meet some new people and interview some people. That'd be uh, pretty cool and weird for me. Uh, gets me out of my comfort zone, expands my comfort zone, I guess. So, but yeah, that's that's where we truly are at. That's my background, I guess, an in- introduction of, to me and the podcast itself. Uh, expect a lot of change, you know, format-wise, as I figure things out moving forward. Uh, I would love loves some type of feedback on a you suck or uh, besides like oh great job like hey you should be talking more about this or your audio or video quality is good or bad or you know give me something that's constructive which would be you know great uh if i am reaching people like motivating you to become a better person or making you more aware of yourself or something like I would like to hear that you know making a difference is uh like pretty big to me purpose purpose that's what I I know I struggle with purpose (laughs) so but that seems like a great place to end today with purpose So I hope everybody enjoyed this podcast, the introduction, as I should say. Hope everybody enjoyed it. Hope everybody is being safe with the world being on fire. Hope everybody's having a good time. Please be awesome. Inspire people. And we'll catch you on the flip side. Take care and have a good time.